us again on the message this Wednesday night. Um, the message, of course, is brought to you by Lehubila Islamic Media Foundation and Bonsai Masters of the Philippines. Next time you're at, uh, at Makati, you can check out their work. A beautiful, beautiful work for landscaping and, and gardening from the Bonsai Masters of the Philippines. Um, tonight, actually, uh, is uh, according to according to my information from our sponsor. Tonight is going to be the last night that we are on uh, Wednesday nights, and uh, tomorrow we'll be moving to Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. And we'll continue uh, on Thursday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. And a different program will take our slot here on Wednesday, which will also be for Islamic education and information. And we hope that you'll continue listening then, as well as following us on our voyage to Thursday night. And then, of course, after our program from 8 until 9 p.m. is the wonderful program, Women in Islam, uh, which features my, uh, my wonderful mother-in-law, Rashida, my beautiful wife, Aisha, and uh, my wife's auntie, uh, uh, Fatima, and they will continue to bring information specifically about uh, women's issues in Islam. And uh, inshallah, uh, God willing, you'll join them. Now, the program on Thursday night for women in Islam is, of course, in Tagalog. So a lot of the folks that are tired of listening to me speak in English, no problem. If you can make it from 7 to 8 listening to me in English, then you'll be rewarded from uh, 8 until 9 listening to uh, these women talk uh, and very intelligently in Tagalog. So uh, tonight, um, we're going to tackle a pretty serious topic here. We're going to talk about marriage in Islam. Uh, and uh, well, actually, before we get started, of course, I need to give you all our contact information. Um, our text number, and you can send text messages either uh, while we're on the air, or of course, if you have questions, comments, that sort of thing that you want to give uh, through the week, the text message is always to receive uh, comments from listeners of the message. And that again, that number is zero nine two two six zero four four two three three. Again, that's 0922-604-4233. Our email address is islamradio at yahoo.com. Again, that's islamradio at yahoo.com. You can view videos of our broadcast on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash islamradio.com. Again, that's www.youtube.com slash islamradioph. And you can download the audio files uh, from our podcast account, which is islamradio.mypodcast.com. And again, all of the information for our online, uh, the email, the YouTube, and the podcast is shared with Women in Islam. Um, I also want to uh, want to announce that uh, uh, Brother Yaki will no longer be joining us here on the message. Um, my information is that he will be having his own show very soon. Uh, we look forward to that, and we ask that Allah bless him in this new program, and that it will bring great information to the listeners. And I look forward to getting more information about that to share with you at a later date. So. Uh, tonight, as I said, we're going to be discussing marriage in Islam and addressing questions that the listeners have sent in, as we requested last week. Um, so we got some really good questions, and inshallah, we'll give them all good answers. And um, I'll tell you what, some of these really took a lot of digging to get answers for. You guys have some good questions. So, you know what they say, nothing worth having comes easily, and that's definitely true for marriage. It, it is a lot of work. It takes daily effort to maintain the strength of the household and to establish the kind of relationship that will last a lifetime. I have to be honest with our listeners, though. I'm not a relationship expert or a marriage counselor. I married last year at age 31, and, you know, I, that's why I've had to do so much for research for this segment. And I really wanted to kind of do this as a personal exercise to help me uh, improve my own stance as a husband. I'm still in my first year of marriage, so I'm still learning a lot of th- a lot of things. And uh, really, this show has taught me a lot in just doing the research. So, the first question is, what is the purpose of marriage in Islam? And I, I think this question really is meaning, how is Islam different from uh, other religions. 
the, the function of marriage, how is it any different than uh, like a Christian marriage or Hindu marriage or anything like that? Now, according to the authentic Hadith and Quran, Islam views the general purpose of marriage so that the sexes can provide company to one another, love to one another, to procreate children and live in peace and tranquility to the commandments of Allah. You see, it's not natural for people to live in celibacy as some religions force upon uh, their, their priests and things like that. Now, rather, it's very natural for people to desire sexual relations. Now, in Islam, the only legitimate outlet for sexual relations is within marriage. Allah has placed within us the ability to love and cherish those that we are intimate with after marriage so that warmth and love and peace may grow between a husband and wife. It is only through marriage in the proper way of Islam that a man can fully embrace his religion by showing this mercy, kindness, and dedication to his wife and children. If he fails in this, then he loses the great reward that comes with being a just and fair husband and father. Likewise, it is in loving her husband and maintaining his household that a woman can perfect her religion. If she fails to be fair and tender to her husband when he has done no wrong to her, or if she fails to take care of raising and educating the children when she has been provided all the materials to do so, then she loses the great rewards that come with that. So, the bottom line here is that the purpose for marriage is to make a person whole in his or her life and religion, so that he or she may come closer to Allah as the marriage grows in strength and love towards one another. Okay, so then how does a Muslim go about finding a spouse that is different from the way a non-Muslim would find a spouse? And really there are a lot of things. First of all, our method of dating is totally different from most other religions. Now, some people will say Muslims don't date. That's not really true. Muslims don't date in the traditional sense that most people in America, in Europe, and in most countries in Asia understand. A guy and a girl can meet in a lot of ways through mosque activities, work, school, family introductions, all sorts of things like that. But once a person finds someone that he or she is interested in, and the feelings should be discussed with parents and perhaps the imam. The man usually initiates things by discussing matters with his parents. Then once getting their approval, he will discuss with her father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, uncle of the father, grandfather, all these people that are mahram for her. That means forbidden for her to marry. Now in some cases, uh, like in the case of a divorcee or a single mother who has embraced Islam later in life, you know, he may even have to get in touch with her son. Now, I'm sure that would be a very nerve-wracking thing. So, now um, the point of clarification here is, now you've got all these people that you can contact. In, in this order, this is the order of preference. Father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, uncle of the father, grandfa uh, uncle of the grandfather, the brother, the nephew, the grandnephew, and the son, grandson, etc. Now, the point of clarification here is that in-law mahrams are not desirable for contact. That would be like father-in-law, brother-in-law, because their status of mahram is temporary. The permanent mahrams have more of a dedicated sense towards the woman. So they will be more apt to look after her best interest and make sure that the man who is petitioning for marriage is going to be a good match for her. So once a man has approached the appropriate male relative and is then given permission to proceed, then he is allowed to talk and meet with the woman directly. The couple should never meet in private and should be chaperoned by relatives or trusted individuals, such as an imam or trusted 